Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to gather a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world, one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human motivation, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. To gain that understanding, I am mining the intersection of psychology, theology, and philosophy to make you a better writer. This is episode 87. Is there a biology of understanding that differs from knowing? This is just a question to ponder, and it's something that I wonder about. I'm very much interested, as you know, in the character traits, and I'm in the process of getting ready to do a deep dive into what all is known about the various character traits that I've studied in great detail as presented by Thomas Aquinas. But of course, that's one source. It may be the single most fully incredibly developed source, but there are many others. And this is the intersection of philosophy, theology, and psychology after all. It's the place where all three are in agreement and it's amazing to find a spot where, especially where theology and science of any kind are in agreement. Uh, and philosophy, well, philosophies are all over the place, so you can't really say. But I think it's fascinating to, to explore this area where there are two such diverse sides correspond. Some, there are various authors in this regard, and, uh, and it, the question is are, is, are we anything more than just our brain? Is there a, a side to man that transcends the physical body? And of course, that's, that's a big debate, and um, if I very firmly avoid taking sides in that debate, Nevertheless, it's possible to explore a little bit of some of the consequences of the two sides. Uh, if, you're taking a, if you're taking a very totally materialistic view, you might end up uh, siding with uh, Lisa Feldman Barrett, who basically comes all the way to the conclusion that even our sense of ourselves and our sense of our existing from moment to moment is simply an illusion. It's all a chemical reaction designed to make us feel that we exist through time. We, it's we're really just, you know, no more, um, no more conscious, even you know, perhaps than an earthworm. We just have this illusion of consciousness. So in that case, you probably also have an illusion of understanding, since. Understanding is something that gets overlaid on the top of knowledge. Well, if we step back from it a little bit and take a look at some of the implications. If you, the question is, is, is the materialistic view the, the complete and accurate view? Or is there more um, an eternal spiritual side that, that in point of fact is is the more accurate. So let's stay on the ground, take the mathematical side of things, case one, case two. And what you find if you say you are you, you have the total materialistic view of things. You walk down the sidewalk and in the, your path you accidentally kick a pebble and it goes skip 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 down the sidewalk in front of you. Well if you have a purely materialistic view of the world of the sort of Lisa Feldman Barrett, that pebble is actually more important than you are because that pebble is under no illusion that it is conscious. We are the ones walking around deluded. And furthermore, that pebble is still going to be in existence long after our bodies are cremated and we're gone from the earth. So a purely materialistic view doesn't have much, doesn't really place much value 
upon a person at all. Uh, I guess you simply have to leave it in the hands of the person to put a value on themselves. If you go to the opposite extreme and you take the eternal, um, a loving, intelligent God who wants to bring us to be with him forever in a place we'll call heaven, well then the consequence of that is quite dramatically different because then you can stand on a very, very dark night and look up at the sky in a cloudless dark night see all the stars of the Milky Way and as much as you can see beyond and you are greater than any of it on the same grounds as the pebble because you being an eternal being will be around when the rest of the universe has faded away and gone the way of, of cold and isolation and ground down to nothingness. So it's rather fascinating to find out that, that if you, when you start with such a local question, which is to say biology is the biology of the brain does or doesn't contain understanding and does that matter, it seems like a very small question. And then when you look at the implications of it, the implications are absolutely enormous. And one could simply say, well, let's forget issues of value. <laughs> Too hard to handle, but they're dramatic. So, you know, where do you, where do you go to, to ferret that out? I guess on the one hand you could say, well, science is, science is real. Science gives us the airplane. Science gives us the chair that you're sitting in. Science gives us you know, everything basically is all explained. But of course, science does not say that it explains everything. Why we've got dark matter now and dark energy, and we used to think that we knew most of the things. Uh, wasn't it a story told of Einstein that he was once told, why would you want to go into physics? It's done. We know everything there is to know. And now, in all of these years since that phrase was spoken to Einstein, we're now at the point where we don't know 96% of the con contents of the universe. So I would say science isn't going to give you anything even close to certainty. And of course, since anything non-material would only be able to project itself onto the material for us to even understand it, I think it becomes pretty impossible to find certainty on either side of that question. Um, it may not be important, but I think it's an interesting one to at least puzzle over a little bit. I'm not sure that, that I can give an answer as to how to go about resolving it. But it's an interesting question. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, wait, before we go, before we go, good news. The book is ready. Well, Anyway, if you are looking at that address on Monday morning, <clears throat> excuse me, you will find that you can now get the 70-page book, Writing with Emotion, available at cost. The wait is over. Thanks. Bye-bye.